Hey everyone, Vito from More Beer here. I'm with Patrick. We're doing a crossover episode. He recently brewed a kettle sour and we're gonna taste it and talk about brewing kettle sours. Cheers. Cheers, man. All right, so tell me about this beer, Patrick. Yeah, so I was recently asked by a friend who was getting married to brew a beer for her wedding. She requested a sour. Uh, I had never brewed a sour before on my own and figured it was a good opportunity to promote the K-pop kettle sour kit and uh, just kind of see how it goes. So yeah, we brewed it on the Digi Mash, which was my first time using that system. It was a little uh, different than brewing on a three vessel system, but it all kind of came together well. And my first take away was, wow, like brewing kettle sours is actually really easy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, if you have just a normal kettle, it can be kind of tough because you got to figure out a way to keep it warm, right? While the lactobacillus is fermenting. So you use the digi boil to uh, keep your temperature. Yeah, exactly. What was so funny is I came to that realization of I've been using the digi boil as my hot liquor tank for years and a light bulb just kind of went off. and I was like, well, I can use that for the lacto fermentation. Uh, you just program the temperature and it just maintains it. You don't have to mess with heat blankets or anything else. And uh, it went really well. So you, you did the video, we've got the brew day. Talk, walk me through the brew day. People can go check out that video, but let's talk through it so we can talk about those different steps. So yeah, the, the brew day was pretty much like a standard brew day, to be honest. Uh, there's a little in-between part between the mashing and the fermenting that uh, is the lactobacillus part, but the brew day was pretty straightforward. You know, you're doing a mash uh, and then you pull out the grains and boil it and bring it just for what, uh, 10 minutes? Yeah, yeah, we just want to, you know, uh, push out. There's two things we're trying to do here. We want to push out oxygen, right? Because mm -hmm. oxygen is, is in water, right? Um, so we want to push out the oxygen and then also sanitize the wort, you know, right. so bring it above 160, 180. Yeah. Um, so just boil for five, 10 minutes. And then from there, there is, you know, you got to cool it again, but then there is one step that is probably the intermediate uh, step where you have to uh, hit it with CO2 right to kind of create a blanket at the top of the kettle and then wrap it up yep uh pitch your lacto strain and let it go oxygen is not your friend at this point um what you can create is like acetobacter uh you know vinegar kind of taste if if there's oxygen present with that lactic acid um, also worth mentioning since we're talking about a boil here um, this is boil without hops so um, hops are a, a sanitizing antibacterial agent so the old rule of thumb is you know um, if you're doing a lambic or something like that you want to keep it below seven ibus because anything higher than that will actually you know kill or, or thwart the the produce, production of lactic acid but the cool thing about a kettle sour is we're souring prior to the real boil right, right. so if you wanted to make a sour ipa for instance kettle sour is the way to get there because you're yeah. souring your wort then you could add your, your hops. You can go to 40 IBUs, right. um, sour and bitter kind of competing flavors. So, you know, balance that. I'd go for like 20 IBUs if I was trying to do right. a, a sour IPA. Um, but on like lambics and things like that that we talked about earlier, you know, you want to keep that IBU as low right. so you can get the souring. But with a kettle sour, you could, you know, you create your lactic acid and then you go crazy with your, your boil hops. And what's great about a kettle sour is that once you hit that sour level you want, your pH is down, you're then killing the lactobacillus yep. and the sanitization of your brewery. Your brewery stays sanitary, right? Yep, yep. Because I remember coming to your house and you'd have your lambics going and you'd have a totally different set of equipment for when you were doing sour beers. Yes, yeah. And that I think always put fear in me of mm. like, I don't even want to mess with this. It's, I don't want to infect my brewery. Yeah, but on, by, the, on the cold side, you know, you're definitely worried right. about that. Yeah. But by being able to, pitch the lacto in your kettle, keep it contained, and then once it's done its job, you, uh, you, you kill it off, and then the rest of the process is, is good. There's no like extra steps really to keep your brewery sanitary. Let's talk uh, about that, that oxygen and, and gas. So I think in the video you went from uh, the bottom and you're pumping the gas, so right. that CO2 is heavier than oxygen, right? So as it raises up through the solution, it's doing two things, it's helping mix the kettle, um, depending on how you're chilling it, it also could help, that circulation could help cool it, but then we're keeping a blanket of CO2 on top of it, and then you're closing it up and just trying to you know, keep, keep any bugs out or anything like that, but then also keep the oxygen out as well, and that's, that's key to a, a good kettle sour. Mm. So yeah, I mean, it's tasting great. Tell me, um, what, what, what fruit did you use in this? 
Yeah, so for this, I use the, uh, I use three different purees. I used uh, raspberry, blackberry, and mango, and I also tossed in a single vanilla bean. So I actually was trying to emulate some of your kettle sours that you've made, where there's a little bit of vanilla in the background, which can kind of round it out a little bit, and it's kind of a supporting character. You don't want it right there in the front, but it can actually like add its own element to it. So yeah, I love the the aroma that it brings, and it, it you know kind of like rounding out that that sourness, absolutely, you know, giving absolutely. a perception of sweetness. Yes, yeah. exactly. So. I definitely maybe used too much vanilla beans, or I used one bean and that turned out to be a little bit too much. For a five gallon batch. For a five gallon batch, yeah. So uh, I guess my one thing would be if I went back, I'd probably use like half a bean, maybe even a quarter bean, and it would still uh, have that vanilla character, but not be so prominent. Even a little more. Yeah, this I would, uh, I mean, I love the vanilla character on there. I'd almost call this like a parfait sour. It's got that vanilla kind of, you know, yogurty, which is great. But if you're, if you wanted even more, I could see, yeah, using less uh, like a half a bean or a quarter bean, like you right. said. Right. Absolutely. And the other thing I ran into while uh, just doing the whole process, because again, I'd never done a kettle sour before, is on day two, day one, the next day I checked the pH and it was already down to 3.4, but I'm tasting it. I'm like, you know, there's a little sourness there, but it's not really that prominent. I know that I like a more sour. My friend likes them like really sour. I'm gonna let this go. And so I ended up letting it go for three days for, mm -hmm. for, before finally just being like, all right, cut it off. It, the lacto is done. And then I remember talking to you about it. You're like, well, yeah, you're not gonna get as much sour character because you still have all those fermentable sugars there. Yeah, it's still sweet so <laughs> and tasting just, it is, yeah. Totally just face palm because it was tasting kind of like lemonade, like a really good tart what lemonade. Did it, what pH did it get down to? You know, I think it went down just a little bit further to about 3.2. Okay. Yeah. But, you know, so not crazy. And yeah. the end result was great. And I think the, the vanilla also kind of took away from the sourness by yeah. providing that sweet background. But... Just a thing I would do next time is like trust your pH meter. It's telling you what it is. And uh, just remember that when you're tasting it, that it's going to be sweeter than it will be at the end because those sugars are still there and they need to ferment out. Yeah, once once it ferments and you get alcohol, it's going to dry it out and then it's you know not going to be as sweet. Um, you're also adding fruit, so you're back sweetening it as well. Right. Um, and then depending on the fruit you're using, it could be a sour fruit. So think about that kind of too is, is your target pH. Um, three two to three six is generally what I, you know, depending on the fruit, is what right. I shoot for. Yeah. So Vito, the the kettle sour style is great because it's really approachable. It's easy to get the job done. Most level of home brewers, I think, can can do it. Uh, what would you say is the differences though between a kettle sour and a traditional sour? So uh, you know, when I hear the word traditional sour, I think you know Belgian sour, like a lambic or a goose or something like that. Um, so those are you know take longer. The the lacto, the souring, and the brett. Um, so Britannomyces it adds different flavors and it takes longer to achieve those, you know, six to nine months at the earliest, you know, the best ones are two, three year blends. Um, what a kettle sour to me is more like is like a Berliner Weiss or a, or a goes or goze. Um, so it's just lactic acid, lactobacillus. Um, so, uh, you know, just one note kind of, you one know, dimensional, just, yeah, dimensional, um, quicker. They're easier to do that. So. Let me talk about a little bit, you know, before kettle souring was a thing, there was sour mashes and that's how I, you know, got into them. You'd make Berliner Weisses um, and you'd, you'd add, you know, woodruff syrup and things like that and cherry syrup to flavoring after it. Um, what a sour mash is, the same exact premise, you're, you're introducing lactobacillus prior to the boil. Um, so that's the nice thing too about a kettle sour is, you know, if you're doing a traditional sour, you have lacto brett that you're doing on the back end, which is, you know, you have bacteria, whereas with a kettle sour or a sour mash, like we're talking about, uh, it's all pre-boil. So it gets killed during the boil and, and none of those bacteria, because, you know, lactobacillus is a bacteria is, is in your brew house or around afterwards. Um, with a sour mash, um, what you're doing is you're adding uh, basically unmilled grain to your mash and, and holding it for several days to sour on that side. Um, so it's kind of neat. Uh, we talked about, you know, grain dust in, in other videos and there's literally lactobacillus on all grains. So. Which is something I just learned yeah. after years of brewing, I found out that there's lactobacillus in grain dust. <laughs> yeah, so you know, that is a, a souring agent. Um, so that's kind of the primary difference between, you know, traditional sours and kettle sours or sour mashes. I think kettle sours 
definitely the, the easier way to go um, because you've, you've, you've kind of cleaned up your whole mash tun and all that. It's, it, it's, you know, if you're mashing and then holding that and then you still got your boil to do, yeah. um, you know, so it's, it's kind of splits up your day. A I was going to say it breaks up the brew day, which yep. can be kind of fun because, you know, sometimes a five, six hour brew day is daunting. It takes away your whole Saturday, your whole Sunday, but kettle sours, you can kind of do like part A after work one night and then come back and do part B like on the weekend. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. The one thing you're kind of doing, at least that I like to do <clears throat> is boil the wort just to, you know, kind of disinfect it. Um, for, so you then you have to chill the wort down to lacto pitching temp. Um, so that, you know, add, you know you're, you're heating and then cooling. So it adds a little time, but yeah, you're splitting up your brew day. So it, it, it makes it easier. So Vito, for this beer, I use the Lalaman Sour Pitch, uh, just as a straight lactobacillus strain for the souring, and then I just fermented it with uh, Cali yeast. Mm -hmm. So what would be the difference between that uh, fermentation regimen versus uh, a traditional sour? Yeah, so you know, like we talked about earlier, we're pitching the lacto uh, before the Saccharomyces fermentation, um, and you could use, you know, like the Lalaman lacto. There's lacto blends. I've even used yogurt before, like because yeah. uh, you know there's lactobacillus in, right. in, in pure yogurt. Uh, so I've used that as well. So there's all kinds of grain we talked about a minute ago of, of using that. So um, there's six or seven different lactobacillus strains that are good for uh, lactic acid fermentation. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, it's really just brand and, and, and what, what you feel comfortable with. All right, Vito, it was great talking about sours with you as always. Uh, so thanks for watching guys. Uh, if you haven't tried kettle souring yet, please do check out the video where I do one on the Digimash. If I can do it, anyone can do it. Only takes a couple of extra pieces of equipment and you'll be in there. Uh, so until next time guys, thanks for watching. Hit that like button, subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Well, let's, uh, we've got these commercial examples. I say we uh, try them out. Absolutely. Did you bring your antacids? Ooh, might have left those at home. <laughs>